Hello. Hello, melancholy. How the are you? Uh, the myth, the legend, the icon, the hero of Untapped. How are you? <laughs> How's your day? So I'm doing good. It's actually midnight here, but that's the best time to enjoy Sydney. And uh, you're you're in Nashville. I am. It is 8 a.m. bright and early here in Nashville. <laughs> that's exciting. Music City. What a great party town. Uh, you're drinking coffee. What a great party. I am. I think I might break into a breakfast beer here pretty soon. A breakfast beer. Wow, because it is breakfast time over there. Well, we're talking, um, this is this is the beginning of a, a podcast slash vodcast series that we're going to do on craft beer because you drink a lot of it and I drink a lot of it. And if people are wondering how you succeeded succeeded in getting beer in Nashville, it's because I send it to you. Um, and we're, we're talking Untitled Art today. You've got Untitled Oh, have you got the same can? How? No, that's a cloudy. I've got the fruit smoothie. Similar cans. Oh, okay, close. Yeah, yeah that's good. We have that's a lot good. of cans here. We both had orange happening. Yeah, yeah, you've got some great cans there. Um, that's fun. Oh, that looks like, oh, you've got a collab there. That, that's exciting stuff. So, um, tell me, so my story is, I, my name's Cetal, and I have been a fan of beer for not that long, probably 2015, I used to travel to America, and um, I would always go to beer houses and they were great because they're super friendly and they're super inexpensive and you would get brisket and you would get ribs and you would get mac and cheese and that was enough to keep me happy. But you've got a more interesting story in beer. Um, you started at the rock bottom. I did. I started at the rock bottom and now I'm here. Um, I was born in Rose Bay, grew up there for a little bit. My mom lives in Nashville, so I moved here to be with her when I was a teenager. Started working at a brewery um, where I got to learn about craft beer. There was a brewer named Thomas McCardo that was not okay with me drinking Heineken and Stella. Nothing against Heineken and Stella, but I worked at a craft brewery. And he yeah. basically like, you gotta get your shit together when you know what we're talking about. So he really took me under his wing, told me all about beer, taught me about beer. Uh, mm. I made a few beers with him until I eased myself into beer that I really liked. And now... So you're a brewer or brewster? Brewster. Yeah, I, I brewed two beers with the help of a very experienced brewer. Yeah, nice. Cool. Um, did, did you have any amazing beers that you made that, that were memorable? There was a red ale that was really, really good. It was a... Um, it was a, a Vienna style lager. Wow. Vienna style lager that's red. It was probably my favorite. Love it. It was wow, great. That's, that's, that's cutting edge. Dig it. Um, well, that's cool. Uh, and, and Rock Bottom, I, I believe that's a Colorado chain, but you're at the Nashville side. Yes, I am. Actually, I don't, we're going to see how that goes. I think they actually opened up one in Chattanooga, too. So there's several. Wow. Several. Cool. Okay. But it's a small brewery, like five, three, or three or four breweries for the chain. Nice. Um, it's quite a, Nashville's quite a departure from Rose Bay and Sydney. That's that's very kind of posh suburb. I guess it's a party suburb in, in, in its own, but Music City, I mean, how do you get any work done? It must be a party every hour of the day. It is a party every hour of the day. Luckily, I like to party and yeah. work at the same time. Nice. Um, and if you work in beer, everyone's down to drink all the time. You know, you get to try new beer, you get to educate people about beer, you get to learn more about beer, you can make beer, you can review beer. So being in a city like this is great for someone like me. Yeah, cool. Cool. Well, you know, um, certainly I've enjoyed your fantastic reviews. Um, particularly what always struck me is people talk about beer in the same kind of boring way. If you listen to some admittedly very good video reviews and podcasts about beer, there's some very insightful knowledge that's given, but um, people tend to talk about the flavor and they talk about beer in terms of music terminology. It's like got a note of, of, of lemongrass and, you know, it's, it's very hop forward and that sort of stuff. And um, I kind of like that you sort of equated it to dudes you dated or, you know, experiences I, I, you had in the sack. I think notes are bullshit and that people who use them, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to mistake people. 
I kind of think about my taste in beer like like sex and yeah, like what I was doing. And I think it's easier for people to relate to something personally that they've done. Mm -hmm. And so like what Thomas Mercado did. So when you know when you start having sex and you like like rough sex, for example, or kinky yeah. sex, you're like, I don't really know about this. This is a lot. The first guy that ever got rough with me in bed, I stood up and kicked him in the balls and walked out because I didn't even realize that you were allowed to do that. Like, I didn't know that that was a thing that could be done. As somebody who doesn't really understand um, rough sex, is the kicking in the balls part of the sex or that's a response to the sex? It was a response to, I didn't know what was happening. And so oh, I feel okay. like that's kind of like a hazy IPA. Mm -hmm. I was used to Stella. And then someone slapped me in the face during sex. That was basically this, which at the time, I didn't know what that was. I did not like hazy IPAs. I did not like being slapped. But like now, you know, six years later, I've got a lot of sexual experience under my belt, et cetera. It's kind of fun to get slapped sometimes. Or like, you know, sometimes it's fun to tie someone up. And that's like a, a fruit smoothie. And so as you get more experience with beer, just like sex, you are more open to different flavors and options because you get more comfortable with the genre. No, I, I like that because there's so much variety in, in craft beer. And there's so much experimentation. I could see, immediately see, how that would equate to sex or interesting sex, which is, you know, the kind of sex I imagine other people have. So, um, yeah, that's cool. That's, uh, that, that's exciting. And certainly I've learned some stuff um, from reading your reviews. Definitely about the, um, the equivocation between beer flavors and semen flavors. That's not something I've ever really had a lot of experience with. Um, so that's good to know, I think. That's going to come in handy. I feel like every man should try their own. Sorry, I missed that. I feel like every man should try their own semen once just to get an idea of what they're asking someone else to do. Okay. Just um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take that under advice. I mean, advice, I don't, I... And yeah, so like, if you get more of like an earthy, like, green, almost flavored, like very hoppy, very citrusy, that's like vegan pum. Like this man, this is a... India Pale Ale with Mosaic, Simcoe, and Cashmere hops. Yeah. And like it's just a basic Indian Pale Ale, but this one actually does have a little bit more of like a citrus, earthy yeah. flavor. Mm. It's nice, well-rounded. I would totally put this in my mouth again. This is vegan. So is, is that more of a marriage material beer or more of a one-night stand beer or more of like a two-week fling? This is like a two-month fling. Two-month fling? I can't fling. marry a vegan. It's big news. Yeah. Big news. There you go. Big news. Um, well, let's, um, we should talk about the beers pretty soon, but what, what I've always loved is that um, it feels like your reviews aren't always catered to the same dudes that drink beer. It feels like you're constantly thinking about what women want to drink. You're talking about what your girlfriends would like to drink. When there's a sour, you're always thinking about, hey, this would be great for a breakfast out with the girls. Or well, I could see the, the the girlfriend that I could recommend this to. I kind of love that because not many people are catering to female flavors. And now, thirty two percent in America of um, of craft beer drinkers. So good on you. Percentage, yeah. And I think that people should talk to women more, and women should talk to women more, and women should appeal to women more, and mm. women should stop thinking about men in general. So, of course, I focus on women because. That's just how I conduct my life. And I prefer talking to women. And I think women are really missing out on craft beer, especially when there's things they would definitely be interested in. Like if I see a lady order a lemon drop at a bar, yeah, I will go up to her and suggest something like the lemon meringue IPA. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. And be like, hey, maybe you should try this. It's probably a good idea. You make less bad decisions. You probably don't get as drunk. And it will like open your horizon to broaden your spectrum, you can say that you had an IPA instead of, you know, the normal drink that you always get. It's a cool nice. little mix-up, you know. I like that. I like that. Now, you you are not a trained Cicerone, but you are training to become a Cicerone, right? Cicerone being a beer expert. I am training. Yeah. I'm in second week. Nice. Do you, do you ever think you'll be a Cicerone and a sex therapist at the same time? Huh. Nice I think that... 
giving my patients beer while we talk about sex therapy could really help the situation, kind of like lubricate things, make it a little bit easier to like dive into what's really important. Yeah, I would take you seriously talking about beer and sex if you use the word lubricate very early on in, in the consult. I would, Lubrication I would, is underestimated. Yes, Chris, sorry, can you say that again? You cut out briefly. Oh, um, I said lubrication is underestimated. Yeah, yeah, super underestimated, you know. Um, I was going to say wetness was um, better than hardness, but, you know, I don't know that that's true. And it didn't really rhyme, so not as funny as I thought it was going to be. So let's talk about on top of where you're at in sex. Hmm. If you're like mid-sex, lubrication is better than hotness. Your pre-sex hotness is better than lubrication. That's true. That's true. It's a time and a place for these sorts of things. Um, They're really not that hot. You can turn them over and keep going. Your lubrication helps. Okay. Well, you got a lot of beer there. I'm, I'm super <laughs> impressed that you've got lots and lots of untitled art. Um, here in Australia, as yeah, you may well know, we, we, we've only just got it. Thank you to Forward Hops for importing it into Australia. But you, um, how, how far is Nashville from Madison, Wisconsin? Um, I think it is about five hours by plane, maybe three days, two days by car. Yeah, nice. Um, that's quite the drive. Would you, would you, I mean, have you ever been to Madison? I haven't actually. I've never been to Wisconsin. All right, neither have I. So, you know, it's, um, sounds like that could be a fun trip, but, um, hopefully it will inspire everybody to go there. Sorry? I said beer and cheese are my people. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Beer and cheese matching. That's probably something we'll do on one of these. So, Untitled Art, um, uh, so, you know, my job is to do some of the research on this. Um, I can't talk informatively about uh, men and sex with beer, so I'll just try and give the boring facts. Based out of um, Wisconsin, and they certainly churn out a lot of beers, and there are lots of interesting beers. I don't really think they have a core range. They say the bulk of sales for beer comes out of a core range. Um, I, you could be forgiven for not really knowing what the core range is of Untitled Art. They're just a whole lot of really, really interesting beers. Um, you're the queen of milkshake IPAs. Um, and I know they cater to your flavors very, very strongly. So I thank you for discovering them for me. And they're called Untitled Art because they do support artists and have a bit of a, a theme happening. So this is the artist, Rain Smith, who's done this beautiful piece. And tell us about some of the artwork that you've got on, on the cans that uh, are in front of you. Because you're a graphic designer, yeah? I am, I'm a trade writer. That's exciting. I actually think this is the one that's drawing my eye the most. Oh, this right here. So who's the, who's the artist doing that They're, one on that hazy? They actually have a lot by this artist. This is Noel Miller. Oh yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Noel Miller, hopefully, successfully. Uh, see you by his time where I come up with Noel Miller facts. All right. There's actually, I'm going to show you all the cans by Noel Miller because they are okay. all, this lemon meringue is really beautiful. It's got like this floral aspect to it. Uh -huh. She went a little bit more interesting on the honey stout, a little bit more literal with these honeycombs. But it's oh, still I, got I like the, the hexagons to, you know, Designate the honeycomb. I like the bright colors. I like the shapes. Let's see. I think she did one more. I, I just love that, you know, that, that shows me that they've tailored some of the artwork towards the beer rather than just picking random pieces to put on the beer. That would suck. Oh, no, I think, yeah, I think she definitely knows the beer when she makes the, when mm. she makes the beer. So, Noel Miller, abstract painter, works out of Colorado. Uh, Floyd Collins, she has a beer phone drawing. Um, I think that's a Bachelor of Fine Arts, but it could be um, Bloody Fine Arts, maybe. Uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. <laughs> bloody Fine Arts. So um, she focused on traveling and uh, she really dove into her work when she was traveling. This is what she says, large swatches of color build a platform for the telling of these stories. So that color is not an accident. She meant that. Um, clouds of color is what she was talking about, create a language of what is remembered in contrast with when moments of these memories lapse. And those moments are probably when you're about three drinks in. I know, but like, I mean, I, I get it. I think it's beautiful. I think she's a I really think beautiful one. stuff. Yeah, just, just absolutely wonderful. A lot of movement. 
Can I ask another question? Does this kind of look like a memory? Oh, it does. Yeah. It does. Have you um have you ever bought an untitled art can purely for the art? Like you thought, I don't know if the beer's going to be any good. I just want the artwork. Yes, almost half of the time. Okay, half of the time. Well, there's about the three three beers up here that I would personally just drink if I were going to a, a brewery. But oh, four okay. of them were also surprisingly good, but I would not have picked them out off of like a tap winner. Well, um, this, this piece by Rain Smith, which, um, you know, what can I tell you about Rain? Visual storyteller, uses many types of materials to create the illustrated narrative of her work. Um, this is all from the website as well, so you know, I, don't want, I don't want to make it sound like I've done a tremendous amount of research here. I really have not. I can in future. Um, I will go so far as to potentially date some of the people involved with the brewery that, uh, that is here. Um, if I have to, if it's necessary, I'll go on above and beyond. Okay. What's better, sex with brewers or sex with artists? Um, I don't think I've ever had sex with a brewer, so I'm gonna say sex with artists. How many yeah. sex with artists? You've never had sex with artists? Do the musicians count? Yeah, I mean, they're a kind of artists, yeah. But don't you okay, want to visualize? Yeah. Okay. I've never done that before. You've never, you've never had sex with an artist. Well, there, there's a um, bucket list item, um, or bucket at least, list, yeah, yeah. you know, on your to-do list for next week, potentially. Um, how have you not had sex with an artist in Nashville? I don't really know. I, I, I think that musicians at this point are, are kind of annoying to me. So, like, if you play a guitar, I immediately am like, good Yeah. Okay. But um, in, now yeah. we have somebody. What's hit rain? Rain Yeah, um, nothing here to say whether I'm rain coming. rain will uh, fall for your charms. Uh, nothing about her marital status or her propensity to sleep with girls that look like you or sound like you. Um, but rain shows her original art at galleries and museums and local businesses, <laughs> and previously a painting instructor at the Tampa Museum of Art. Um, she's also a marketing coordinator, so I don't know whether she'll appreciate your graphic design stuff. Maybe that's how you can get it in there. There we go. I should do some marketing. Yeah. In there you go. Um, there is actually one dude. Uh, there's there's four female artists that are supported as part of Untitled Art. But Eric Thomas Waliva kind of looks a little bit like Goldie and uh, and Kurt's kid Wyatt Russell. I don't know if you know Goldie mm -hmm. Horn. I do. Feel like if I slept with an artist, it should be. A <laughs> yeah, I mean he could be the guy. Um, I, I will just I will show you what he looks like. He looks like a brewer. Interesting. He, he's not, but yeah, I, I take your point. You, you have a bit of an opinion on people with beards, right? The beanies and the beards, they're a thing. Yeah. Um, that's okay. Uh, not, not everybody can not have facial hair. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the beer. Um, so that's Untitled Art. Uh, I love that there's pretty much a new beer coming out of them every week. And... Um, I, I, I know you love Chonk from Drecker, Drecker Brewing wow. out, of, out of North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota. And I know they're, they're at the pinnacle for you. Where do Untitled Art, where are they in relation to, uh, to Drecker? They're actually pretty close. So Wisconsin and North Dakota are next to each other. So they are a little bit more rivals. I also want to do a shout out to Dennis who sent me Chonk because he knows how much it means to me. I appreciate that. Deeply, yeah. deeply appreciate it. Oh, that's cool. Um, yep, I, I've seen Dennis comment on your on your uh, wonderful reviews, so that's kind of fun. Um, alrighty, let's talk, let's talk about the beers. What do you want to start with? I've only got one that I can really. I, I think you should talk about that one first, and then I have three that I'm very excited about, and then I'm going to try a breakfast beer while we're here. Okay. And give a review on the coffee stout. I'm just gonna let you know. I've never, I've never had an untitled art beer, so I'm pretty excited to finally. <gasps> oh. oh my god, Let's do it. Mm. I'm so excited. Wow. Oh my goodness. What have I got? I've got the fruit smoothie. That is orange, carrot, apple, mango, banana. The, um, the orange and the carrot have taken that drink over. Um, 
that's that's you know that's that's a five person orgy help me out here so is it i i compared it to like a sultry redhead like you can't yeah. really tell if you like what's going on or if you're just really into like the carrot talk you know like if you're just oh, like nice. really here for that or if you actually I, like the girl i hear you i um i normally go for a darker colored redhead um Maybe a fake redhead. Maybe that's what I secretly like. Not one of those Irish, Gaelic, Scottish types. Um, that's probably a lie uh, because I'm super attracted that's to right. Scottish redheads. But um, if I had a choice, if personality wasn't a part of it, or if I paid more attention to personality, I would say that the fake redhead, that's the girl I want to hang out with. Brunette soul, mahogany copper hair. And that's not what's happening here. This is more Gaelic redhead, like the sort of girl with freckles that advertises Warby Parker glasses. That's what we've got here. And it's a bit much. Oh, this is hot. It's me. There's a lot happening in that drink. Um, yeah. Whew. I like that you added glasses to the redhead, a whole different level of, of depth. Here. No, have you, have you not noticed a lot of those spectacles ads? Uh, freckly redheads smattering of no. freckles, thick glasses. You, you're not saying that? I don't watch a lot of commercials. I don't watch a lot of TV, but the commercials kind of run past me. Yeah, well, while you're having actual sex with real people, I'm staring at ads of um, <laughs> girls with freckles and, and wearing interesting spectacles. Just imagining what it would be like spectacles. talking to them. Yeah. I bet they'd be nice. I think most redheads I know are nice. Yeah. And yeah. terrifying. If you, if you take the psychotic personalities out of the mix, I think they're wonderful. Well, the psychotic personalities like to like pop up and then go away. And so like mm. for like the while they're gone, sure. great. And then it's like, whoa, personality. And I was like, okay, I'm back down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like this keeps things fresh in a relationship. Yeah. You know, we always like a little bit of neur neuroses. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, that's my take on it. Um, what else? What else? How, how would I describe this like Melancholy described it? I know you want me to say a joke here, and I don't know what it is. No, no, no. I, I, you know, I just want to get to the core of the flavor. There's no, you know, there's no need for a joke. Oh, okay. I actually did try that one. So I'm going to go with, okay. I thought it was really sweet. Okay. A little bit too sweet to have more than one of. Oh. Uh, but yeah, very good. Sure. Mm. I got buzzed for sure. I mean, it's, it's I feel like I feel like if I met a yoga instructor and I wanted to impress her, um, I would I would buy one of these. A yoga a yoga instructor, um, a girl that is not actually health conscious but thinks she's health conscious, and so she purposely gets like these things that look healthy but are not. If you like pull that out, she'd be like, "Oh wow, it's a carrot! You're such like a health goddess." Yeah, you could use it to test how like committed to the to the craft they really are. So if they're like, oh my god, I'm so into fitness, you pull that beer out, they like that beer. They're not that into fitness and they're gonna be fun. Oh, I like this. I like that. That's very good. That's very good. I, I this yeah. is the test on if you're if you're dating a gym head or not. I I dig that. So I mean, how would I pick the right girl for this? Or I just pick any girl. This is the test. This is the test right here. This is the test. So you pick a girl that you think is like, you know, slim thick, whatever your thing is, fit as fuck, whatever, whatever you're into. Mm. Pick somebody like that that looks like they should be really, really conscious of their thing. Pull that out around them and see if you can actually take it to the next level or if they're going to be like, wow, that beer has a lot of sugar in it and I'm not doing alcohol right now because I have swim team in the morning. And then you're like, wow, we're going to have a great time. Yeah, okay, cool. Done. I'm, I'm down yeah, with that. This, Thank you. This one time I got. I got hit on in a bar by yeah. a guy. In a bar. Mm. I get him back here. We're having a great time. He tells me he's sober. <gasps> I don't date quitters. So that was, <laughs> that was a bar. <laughs> nice. That's a good one. I like so, that. So that would have been great if I would have had that in a bar and pulled that out right then and been like, hey, do you want some of this? It's got carrot in it. It's good for you. And they would be like, oh, I'm sober. I would have known right then and there. No thanks. Red flag. Red flag. It's like red a red flag. If they don't like that beer, it's a red flag. 
I just feel like in, in bars, you've got undercover cops, right? And these would be undercover AA sponsors. They're just, you know, got a vacancy and they're just there to get somebody fresh, red hot. You know, we like fresh seafood. I need we a like vacancy. Fresh train wrecks. Mm. For the flesh is really <laughs> I'm making a note to talk to my sponsor about this. <laughs> nice. Um, you have a really fun sponsor from, from what I remember. Uh, great. Well, I'm, I'm super glad that I drank that. I just have one question for you though. This has in it, orange, carrot, apple, mango, and banana. Got to say the orange and the carrot take over the show. If, if you held a gun to my head and said, what are the other three no, ingredients? Banana. Are there another three ingredients? I would say there's not. And my brain, my brains would be splattered across the wall. So why do they sometimes chuck in extra ingredients if you can't really taste them? I feel like it's a, like it's like a girl lying about having a dick. Like you should really just tell me what I'm gonna taste and nothing else. Right. Well, that's a miracle. Like you know, time. like when you get a girl home and you're like, wow, you have a penis. I feel like we should have discussed this before, and now I'm just surprised. But this is like the opposite of that. This is like thinking a guy has a dick, and then you take him home, and he doesn't. And like tragic accident happened or I don't know but there's no dick and so it's like excuse me where's the banana and the melon I was expecting some banana and some melons and now there's neither right or girls with push-up bras it's a girl it's the girl with push-up oh, bras yeah, the push-up bra mm. for a long time I thought I was uh I was into girls with small breasts that were perky but actually I was just into push-up bras and it's a lot cheaper dating a push-up bra it is so that is <laughs> We could also call that the push-up bra of beer. I like that. So it's it's the Warbly Parker redhead <laughs> with a push-up bra. Push up bra of beer. There you go. Just just uh, this beer got melancholy. Mm. Yeah, and then you get her home. She takes off the boobs, and there's no melons, and and there's no banana. Nah, exactly. Well, there you go. And you've had that one before. I have. Yeah, I had that one on the beach. It was really good. Nice. Well, it was a great place to have. It was it. a great. Beer. Good on you. Good on you. Well, I want to hear about all your exciting beers that you've got there. Okay, so right now, my other second favorite that we're very excited about, shoot. I just Let's love that in Australia, we, we have access to one can currently, um, which you can get from my beer dealer or like the, the kids at Copper and Oak. Um, 30. Maybe there's other cans, but this, this stuff sells out really quickly. So uh, oh, I'm it. impressed that you've got yours. This is the creme de la creme. This is a fake redhead with real mm. tits. This is like it. Oh, what, what have you got there? The dry hop peach sour? Yes, I want to dry hop this peach sour all day long. Fake redhead. So yes. she's great. Yeah. Real tits. Real firm, perky, double Ds that stand up on their own. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And she's got like that dark mahogany hair and like this personality uh, great personality of a redhead what did i just do i know but i lost you did you find me yeah got you back okay sorry i was i was trying to get that can um because i literally did drink the rest of this after that after that first try so this was great i did okay so when i did i tried a bunch of these together just to uh -huh. like you know compare contrast taste what i was reviewing yeah I tried this one and I reviewed a lot of these probably days ago. So like mm -hmm. you can hear, I did not finish hardly any of them. Right. This thing was in recycling, clean and put away on the other side of the room because I carried this around with me and drank the whole damn thing. You just nailed it. You just, you just had that one. You owned it. I took this bitch home and changed her life. Whew. Listen to you, listen to that talk. So why 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 is that one one of the most impressive? I mean, you've got you've got some very attractive flavors there. Why the peach sour? Why this perky redhead? Okay, well she did not lie. There is peach in there, and that's all they're advertising, and that is what you get. It hits you in the mouth. But it's like a really pleasant peach flavor. It's not like a fake peach. It's like mm -hmm. I have peaches from the Tennessee farmers market in my refrigerator yeah. and it smells the same. They smell right. the same. They smell good. They taste the same. It doesn't taste alcoholic at all. Like, so you're not getting like hit in the mouth with like hops and like, you know, that boozy flavor. Nice. Um, so then we put the dry hopping really helps with that. 
and it's just like a really soft, but it's not too sweet or too strong or too heavy. So you could, I could probably drink like two or three of these because it was, it was definitely like when you pour it in, it's clear. But when you look yeah. at it in the glass, you can see through it. It's a nice clear orange. Yeah, nice. I just, I have no complaints. Like there's nothing about this beer that I don't love. I dig it. All right, cool. I, I think, uh, you know, I'd like to think at the end of this, we have one that, you know, if, if uh, people are on a budget or can't hunt some of these sold out cans, they're going to hunt for one particular one. I feel like it's not going to be the fruit smoothie, although it is the only one you can get in Australia. But yeah, the dry hop. I actually do fruit smoothies. Their fruit smoothies are bomb. I have a blackberry smoothie that I also drink all of. Which is all right, tell us about that. So the blackberry smoothie is very thick, very black, very purple. It like is a is a moment in a glass. Yeah. Um, definitely got a lot of berry. I'm getting more blueberry than blackberry. So maybe they use both. Uh, maybe a berry mix. Um, I've but heard it is the very, difference very between berry. blackberry and blueberry. Huh? I've heard the difference between blackberry and blueberry is that they punch the blackberry a little bit more. That's why it's black and not just blue. That's what I've heard. Not that I can blame berry violence. Blueberry. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't tell. Don't tell our fruit psychic. Um, I I think it was a little sweet. So like again, like blackberries in my head have more of a tart, and blueberries are a little bit more of like a mellow sweet. This was very mellow, very sweet. I could have used a little bit more of a like a kick or like something that made it a little bit less like bland sweet. Yeah. It was good. You keep boiling your fish. Like a, a five or a six out of ten. If, it, ooh, ooh. if you like blueberries and stuff, it's good. I'm I like I like my fruit, you know, to have a little bit more of like a tangy sour punch. Cause cause when I read your review on that, uh, on Untapped, you said you might have rushed drinking it. Um <clears throat> I didn't appreciate it as much as I should have. I'm such an arts hole for doing that. Arts hole. That was funny. Nice work. <laughs> Yeah, I drank, I drank through it pretty quickly. Again, like it's got that really smooth flavor that you're not mm. really thinking about. But I really would have sat there and like, but if you're just talking, it's not going to catch your attention. Okay, I understand. I understand. You really wanted to drink it, but it's not, it's not a standout. It's not a standout. So what have you got there that is a standout? Good. Yeah. I don't regret drinking it. I would, you know, it's, it's like, like a nice, dude. I, I fuck them again. I don't regret it. But like, I'm not frightened home to my mom about it either. I like it. Cool. Right. Um, tell me about one of the other ones you've got there. What's what's this one here? Which yeah. one? Yeah, the the one you think it was on the Eagle Park Brewing Company collab. That one there, yeah. Oh, the Eagle. This one right here. So, no, this one. Yeah, that one there. Oh, yeah. This one. Okay. So, this is the Lemon Meringue IPA. Oh, that sounds great. I got two because I knew I was going to like it. And so I've already drank this one. Yeah. It's excellent. Nice. Um, we love a sour bitch. So it definitely has like a, a dessert. It's got a lemon flavor for sure. But then it uh -huh. also has a dessert flavor on top of it. So it's got like that kind of hollow creaminess of like the, you know, like a, a lemon meringue pie. Mm -hmm. But it's got that hit of sour in the front that I really, really like. Yeah. But then it, it definitely also has some pops in it. So like in the peach, dry hot peach sour, where you couldn't really taste a lot of the hops, you could get them in this one. It, it was just a very well-rounded, you know, IPA. I like, and I, it's drinkable and it's not so heavy that you couldn't have like two to three of them. Mm. That is I think beautiful. this is a really good collab. Oh yeah. Sure. No, that, that, that was a beautiful rundown of, of the beer. It, it, it gives me a good sense of what it is because your own tattoo here says tastes like coconut glitter on a toasty, crusty stripper, but it also tastes like a mankini cake, which frankly is not a review. <laughs> but uh, I will hopefully drive all of you to make your own mankini cake. So I, I kind of respect that. Uh, I think that review was after this order of beers. I think this one was the first one. Yeah. And this one changed my life forever. Nice. And then we got into this. One. I wasn't mad at mad at her either. So okay. I'm sorry for whatever happened on a. <laughs> this is apologize. responsible. Yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> I think, um, but you can definitely tell this is a, a collab because 
I would say this or the peach sour or the honey stout are very stereotypically or the or the the smoothie you had are very stereotypically untitled art this is a little bit more i think more ipa than a regular untitled art beer that also includes any kind of fruit or vegetable okay nice um eagle park's definitely showing eagle park doing good work eagle park doing good work um have you got have you got a hazy double ipa there I do. I have a cloudy, double dry hopped hazy, and then I have a Ford hazy IPA. It's the collab with and Bikinen. Boom. Uh, not that one. Not, not the all together, but the the Bikinen untitled uh, forward hazy IPA. It's summer. It's okay. Maybe it's on the fridge. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, I mentioned that one because I, I, I was pretty entertained by your uh, your review of that. Um, Remind me, please. Where you said, hang Sorry. on, I've just got to make sure it's, it's the right one. We need to be um, really clear that I'm not sober during most of these reviews, so I am not thoroughly responsible for everything I said. All good, all good. So you, you said, how forward is this drink? I just tried to blow my tonsils. I gave the inside of my cheek a hickey. This is one juicy per <laughs> dirty mouthful of a beer. So the kids from Wisconsin and Untitled Art have repressed horn, which comes out in the beer. I think repressed horn is repressed horniness. Is that, is that what it is? That sounds right. There we go. That sounds like me. Yeah. How was it? Um, <laughs> yeah, it did. It really hit my face. Like, do we see this? Do we see this bruise? Oh, on that, my lip? that bruising is from the hazy IPA. Just knocked me back in my seat. It was just a lot. It was it was dramatic. I was I was in a more emotional day that day. I remember this. It was like eleven o'clock in the morning. I was gonna go yeah. get some, some like some lunch with my friends, but I didn't want to look like I didn't have like a petite feminine appetite. So I was having pre lunch beer to like kind of, you know, make me more palatable to the average human being, slash fill my stomach up. I took this thing and I was you know, I was hungry, I was ready for a beer. Mm. Right. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot. And I do admire that about you, is that you're prepared to have beers first thing when you wake up. Yeah, speaking of that, we're going to do that in a second. But, um, yeah, no, it, it hit me the same way that, like, you have a crush on someone when you're a teenager and you're horny. It's like an overwhelming, all-encompassing, wow, that's some pops. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Prime time. So if you Prime like time. that, this is yeah. for you. Some people don't like that intensity in their lives. And, you know, those people have made their choices. I feel like I need to drink that beer because I need a bit of that intensity in my life. You know, I think you deserve that intensity in your life. And I admire the fact that you want it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I don't know if you're able to find that beer, but uh, I know there's one beer that you don't have anymore because we've spoken about it a little bit. And it's the one that um, your uncle came in and swooped up and drank out of your fridge. I don't even know if you got to taste it. And that was the Untitled Art Rainbow Sherbet Sour. I'm very excited about that one because he did, and I did. Um, my uncle does not like beer, which I know yeah. we have at our moments. My dad's, mm -hmm. my, I mean, my mom's brother, and he was raised very Southern, very Christian. It's its own thing. And he, for the longest time, did not believe in drinking alcohol. But like watching like the success it's brought to my life and like what it's done for people in his lives and just how it just helps, you know. I think he's slowly coming around. So he eased in and I said, you should try beer. He's like, oh, I don't like beer. This man will eat a gallon of rainbow sherbet if you give him the option. Um, so I said, I've got you. So I find it in my fridge, have him try it, blows his mind. This man boy. is... 68. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's ever had a blowjob, but this is the closest thing I've ever seen. So he was like, you know what? Eyes got big. He's like, it was a whole moment. I opened his eyes to beer. And so that beer will forever change the life of someone I love. And it's very close to me. You dilated his pupils to beer. Because when you're talking rainbow shit, you're talking, right? 
this was the blowjobs to sex. This was the gateway drug to beer. This is like what that was. This was the gates for him. So that beer is responsible for making my uncle a beer drinker. And I just, I have a, a special place in my heart for it. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I remember your review on that. Excellent. It's almost as good as the Prairie Rainbow Sherbet, um, which I think you've, I've seen you do a review of that. Um, <laughs> To be honest, what an evening that would be, drinking those two beers side by side. It's like the rush of seeing a new MoMA exhibit except for boozy mouthpieces. So you did an art review there. You must have been really high instead of a dude review. What happened there? Talking about paintings instead of beer. You know, I am a woman of many interests and Mm -hmm. in caliber. And occasionally, I don't want to talk about dudes. Okay. I'm more into the art. I like that. And really, it's my uncle. Like I didn't, I didn't want to make it weird. I'm, um, you know, That's I'm fair. open. I'm open to lots of things sexually. Incest is just not one of them. Well, I don't support the sexualization of minors, and I don't support the sexualization of uncles. Or elderly people. I feel like that's a little strange. Well, I don't know. Betty, Betty White can get it. Um, Go over ninety. Yeah, they can have it. I also think that Untitled Art has a really, really good ability to mimic the flavor of ice cream and beer. Oh, yeah. You like that. It's, it's magic. I don't know how they do it, but that or, that rainbow sherbet tasted like rainbow sherbet. This thing, this is Zanzibar chocolate. Oh, wow. It tastes like a fucking fudge bar. I don't know what they did. Nice. And I have a feeling that when I crack this open in a bit, Ooh, it's going to taste exactly like do you, do you want to have breakfast beer with me while you have your nightcap beer? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have my night beer. I'm, you know, slowly working my way through this. I'm not quite the uh, beer and sex athlete that you are, but I'll just take my fruit smoothie and keep going. I don't know. You had your moment. I feel like you've had more impressive sexual feats than me. Ah! Wow. You know what? This is this is really sexual. I feel like we should watch this. Yeah, look, it is, and I'm going to be honest. That's my entire twenties right there. That is your entire twenties. You know what? Yeah, yeah. even down He's to the color. Yeah. Oh wow. A few best blood vessels. Yeah. We love a man that comes a lot for us, right? Yeah, they just can't help himself. Good on you. Um, uh, so it's interesting that you've opened the La Lingera Stout because I think that's their uh, their their latest one, and because um, I know you, you really enjoyed the Honey Stout. Oh, the Honey Stout is so good. Okay, fun story about the Honey Stout. I actually have two of those too. Oh, nice. Good on you. Look at you. I know. We're having a moment. Um, so I have a friend who's a very, very good bartender in like a very nice hotel here. He's considered one of the top five bartenders in Nashville. And his favorite drink is, um, it's called a penicillin with, um, oh, it's like a smoky tequila. Uh, Right. Mm -hmm. What is that called? Uh, uh, A smoky tequila? I don't know. Um, Smoky tequila, like a (laughs) mint. I don't know, uh, Ben Mescal. Mescal, right. So I knew he was coming over. I purposely got all the things to make him his favorite drink. Like mm. really nice honey, really nice ginger, me- good Mescal, like big ice cubes. I had this in my refrigerator. Yeah. And a penicillin's a very honey for drink. And he was like, do you mind if I just try this? And I said, yeah, let's go for it. So he tries it, likes it better than his favorite drink. So. This is good. It also kind of reminds me of like, this would be a great breakfast beer. Definitely reminds me of some cereal. Yeah, nice. It's for a pile of cereal too. I, yeah, this is a solid beer. I would keep this in my fridge if you're a beer drinker and you like people who want to come over and drink beer or you want to share with people or people who are more picky or who have like, are more cocktail things. People who like cocktails would like this, I think, because it's got more of like a- an herbal kind of natural, like, you know, Ford flavor than like a beer flavor. Cause I know we've spoken about potentially apart from having that for breakfast is pre eating prior to a, to a date. You could pre eat by yeah. having one of those. 
That's exciting. I do that too. That would be that would be good for that too. Because like, there's something about the honey in it, and just like the clear, clean honey flavor. That's yeah. like on un- un- adulterated. If you don't really get much of anything else, it's like it almost has like an expensive like taste to it. I, I really think that craft cocktail drinkers, this would be their gateway beer. Oh, man, you, you are you are selling that beer. Like uh, I want, I, want, I, I like wish I could get access to it right now. Um. And, yeah, I, would the, send you, I would send you my other pan. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm ever allowed to, to travel to America again, I would, I would love to, to try some of that. Um, Very massive. So the, the La Lingera, um, what's that? You, you just said it was really, really good. I know when, oh uh, when you posted the, uh, the write-up of the coffee people that are in there, who are the coffee people that, that are in La Lingera? It's La Lingera, right? And um, they describe yeah, themselves as telling it, real it. human stories. And uh, you said it was kind of douchey, and it does sound kind of douchey, the way they, they spoke about themselves, the coffee people. Not Untitled Art, they're great, but the coffee people did sound douchey. Coffee people are kind of douchey, though. Are they? I should not, probably not blink a statement in the entire people group. Um, coffee people tend to be on a higher percent rate more douchey than the average human being. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you because honestly, what's a really respected profession to be a barrister? So they, they are barristers, they can't represent you in court, so they make themselves sound important by calling themselves baristas. I mean, seriously. I mean, if you're a barista, then who's a solicitor? Where are they? What are they doing? Hmm? Are they making tea? Is that what you call a uh, solicitor? <laughs> it sucks. I hope we should start making tea people as pompous and ridiculous as coffee people. Well, there are tea. No, I only do pour over. Yeah, I only do pour over tea, or like I only do tea in a press. I only do tea with like this particular cream, no honey. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I did ask a tea lady out when I was in um, in China, and uh, I'm gonna make a really inappropriate joke, so I'm not gonna make it. it was, it was going to involve the phrase, me love you, ooh, long time. But uh, I'm glad I didn't make that joke. <laughs> probably racist. And I'm not See, actually... See, that's one of the funnier things you said, though, which makes me probably a terrible person. No, not terrible. Oh. Um, what I basically did was I boarded the joke and still told it. <laughs> mm. But you told uh, it in a way where you were self-aware that you were being rude. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, um, like I knew it shouldn't have been told, but I still wanted to try it out. I wonder if that happens. I write that line all the time. Like I have, I have a couple of Asian friends, and that when we hang out, they make Asian jokes about themselves. Yeah. One's one's Filipino, and one is from Vietnam. But they'll make like mm. Asian, just generalized Asian, or like even not their country Asian jokes about them. Yeah. And then I feel weird because I think I want to laugh or like I want to tell the joke too or I want to like get in on it. And I'm like, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm just gonna yeah. sit here and try not to laugh too hard at your shows. Yeah, I feel I feel like I can make <laughs> Sikh Indian jokes and yet they're never that funny. So I don't like I can make them because I have the license to, but the jokes are never that good, so I don't make them. And I feel if I just made a joke for the sake of making one, it would just ruin my comedy street cred. So I don't want to do that. There you oh, go. Sorry. I Speaking mean, this, of, this hmm? tastes like pompous cum. Who? This is like frat boy cum. Like pompous coffee drinker frat boy cum. Ooh. It's not bad. Mm. It tastes expensive. It tastes like something that you should enjoy more than you actually are. Mm. Like the salt flavors hit you in the very front. Pompous frat boy like cum. So you might even call it a frattuccino. Yeah, but like, but like, Frat boy with trust fund cup. Right. Okay. So um, I was going to like try and make a alpha delta kappa joke there, but I don't really know enough about the Greek system. Don't either. It's good. (laughs) I will keep drinking it. I would have it again. I have fucked many of frat boys with trust funds. I I fucked uh, sorority girls with trust issues. Does that count? Oh, those are probably way hotter. Um, yeah, tell me more about like the Zanzibar ice cream stuff. 
Yeah, if they put a little bit of the ice cream into this, um, it'd be perfect. Oh. So maybe this needs, yeah, I do like it though. I like it, blending. You're blending on total uppies. Yeah, it's a black coffee with a little bit of sugar. For some reason, very salt forward, and I don't get any hops out of this, so I'm not entirely. Salt forward, that's an, that's an interesting term. That's the first thing, that's the first flavor that hits my mouth, is like a sweet salt. Like a, yeah. Very decadent. I feel like you've used that expression to describe dudes, you know? It's like, yeah, that guy's really salt forward. Yeah, sometimes they are, you know, salty. Sometimes salty can be fun, you know? Sometimes salty is like the bad boy with like issues that like is really good with his tongue, you know? But how much of it is just dehydration? Like a dude just doesn't drink enough water. Oh. Yeah, when there's not enough water, it just concentrates the salt. No, there's, there's no water in that, but, you know. Look, you know, it's, it's not for me to talk about salty guys. But um, what I loved about your review of the, uh, the Zanzibar chocolate ice cream stout is that you, you reviewed it three times. You must have really loved it. My favorite was what I love I about it. Really, I want to add this to the other beer. <gasps> it's not a sickening thick shake that makes me feel like I'm going to choke on pleasure. This could replace water. It makes my mouth feel like uh, I was born to drink this stuff. Who needs lovers? This is enough. Is that true? Is that enough to replace lovers? I had some pretty mediocre sex the other night, and I feel like I would have rather had this. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. So I do, th okay. This is like a threesome. It's like this guy's okay on his own, but like if you bring this to the table, it's a whole other thing. But then this dude can stand on his own for sure. Yeah, nice. So, like, oh my God. Now that might be too, that might be too many different worlds in the same room, but this threesome. Are you sure? Are you sure that the, the not together, there and... not together, right. not together, but like right, so not really a threesome, then. <laughs> right? Maybe like I don't know, we'll figure it out. But no, yeah. So this is good. This is better. Okay. This is really, this is really good. Right? No, no, no. I, I believe you. I, I don't think we've, we've got a hope in hell of getting. If we ever did. I don't know uh, if I'm sucking on a dick or. A ice cream bar like it's like that level of good wow it's like when you enjoy giving a guy a blowjob what's the abv so what's what's I, it, can't, it can't be much oh it's eight percent alcohol oh that, that would explain why you've just mixed up an ice cream with a dick that would make sense eight percent will do that to you <laughs> i get it i totally get it you know for a second there i'm like is she sure about that but now i get it i, I totally get it um, you know, size of You love a tall boy. Can you get both hands around it? Just barely. I get one hand around. We're close. That's yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's okay. They've got, they've got some stuff to work on. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask about the, um, the chocolate vanilla maple stout. That was in a bottle. Did I, I think. get that one? Yeah. A bottle. Um, Ooh. Is there a bottle of it? I bet there is. I never looked at the bottles. Okay. Like I didn't expect it to be a bottle when I was getting all the inside alert out. Um, Look at the beer fridge. This is a bit of an inside. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's, it's actually gotten better. Oh, this one looks beautiful if we ever get a chance to do anything. Oh, wow. Just, uh... is, there, is there ever any food in, the, in your fridge? Um, well, we have pickles, honey, weed butter, salsa, guacamole, cheese dip, mayonnaise, and eggs, and apple butter. Parmesan beautiful inside. Yeah, no, no. We're, we're seeing some stuff here. We're, yeah, this is good. <laughs> I'm learning some stuff about you. Is this one kind of stepper? Uh, what? I thought I knew everything about you, but apparently not. No, oh, you don't. revision. Oh. Yeah, now we're showing off. I've got so many good bottles in here, dude. Yeah. Cool. Jackie O's out of Ohio. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> oh, I think we might have found it. 
wait, no, this is Prairie. Oh my God, Prairie. That's okay. Oh no, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. We're gonna stay up. We're gonna find it. Okay. It's in here. Okay, so while, while, while you're looking for that, can I can I just talk about a beer that I know you've uh, you've well and truly finished and done away with because apparently it was super yummy. It is the the one, the only. Um, oh yeah, I've got very nice. Uh, strawberry milkshake. And uh, you're the milkshake queen, and this one wasn't as thick as you think oh, it would be. No, that one was fire. I love that milkshake. Okay. Good to hear. Good no, to hear. I, okay. So the strawberry flavor was really good. Oh, wait, is this it? Is it? Blue and I can't, I can't oh, see it. Veil. You're holding it oh, not, not near the camera. It's the veil. All right, no. so you're sure it's in a bottle and it came here. Uh, look here, you've probably finished it. You've probably finished it. I'm just, no, I'm just no, I didn't, I didn't drink it. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> There we go. There we go. You haven't even opened it yet. Well, that's probably, no, that's probably a you. second I, bottle. Probably a second bottle. I saved a lot of all of it. Yeah. I'm trying to save it for what you want. Well, you know, I, I, I just, um, my hope was that you'd, you'd keep a, an extra bottle aside and then I would be able to go to Nashville and like nick it out of your fridge, but that's clearly not going to happen. Um, well, not this year, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Just keep your uncle away from your house. Um, hey, Cash. Jesus Christ. My brother is ridiculous. Yeah, no, no. I've heard he's a bit of a drinker. So, I don't know. That's that's a stout. Are you going to bust open that one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Stay back, Exciting. Exciting shit. Okay. I'm going to go get an actual bottle open. Nice. Yeah, I probably should have drunk this out of a glass. Mm. What? I was just saying I should have drunk the fruit smoothie out of a glass. Do you think I should put it in a glass? Oh, no, it's up to you. It's totally up to you. Uh, I know, yeah, you, you did You did actually review the fruit smoothie and you said, um, it's like fucking a vegan. Something about knowing there's a vegetable in this makes it less sexy. Oh, okay, that's not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> I just think it might have been sexier without the vegetables. Yeah. Ooh, this is a stout. Oh, look at that. That's a very fancy milkshake glass. You are really the milkshake queen. Oh, Angry Chair Brewing. Where are they from? Wait, let me look that up. This art's really cool on it, too. It's by Teresa Navajo. This is a barrel aged chocolate, vanilla, maple, and Real stout, like you said, this is thirteen percent alcohol, so we're not going to be okay with this. Oh, so it's it's a low alcohol drink then. This is from Tampa, Angry Chair Brewing, and from Tampa, Florida. What does Tampa and and Madison, Wisconsin, have in common? Fuck. Or why would Tampa decide to make a barrel aged chocolate vanilla maple imperial stout? I feel like they would make more of a a strawberry milkshake IPA. Right? Uh, that's no? I don't know. I don't know enough about Tampa. I know it's the graveyard of the South. Probably this I just feel like it's popular. Why would you want to stop? Like it never, they never get winter. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you know, you don't know. You know I've, I've drunk stouts in summer. I've drunk stouts in summer. You know, once you go black, I, you can never I, go I, back, apparently. Uh, for real. I, I'm thinking about doing summer of stouts. What do you think, one year? Yeah, it's, I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I think maybe starting so today is Wednesday, and what month is it? It's like the middle of July. Yeah. I think July is a good time to start summer of scouts. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Not in Australia because obviously like winter. Every day here, a different scout. Maybe, maybe we do a contest, <laughs> and you know, I can I can write a scout, and you can write a scout, and we can both give them fives and try and outdo each other. Or what we if we took like all golf. scouts in our we what if we like took all the stouts so and that basically we um we just rank it as low as possible to see who gets the lowest score? Yeah, that, let's not do that. So you're about to say something? <laughs> oh, some of stouts. We could do like like a um, like a football lineup or what's it called? Um, like a like a fantasy football, like where you just keep mm. pinning it down and down and down. 
uh, like a chart until you get to the best stout of all summer. Oh, I like that. Um, I don't know how we would do that, but I'm, I'm interested in spending an entire day for Grant how to make a fantasy football stout league. Maybe, maybe I feel maybe like we, we should have... take a picture of every stout in my fridge. Yeah, and then we draft it based on untapped scores. Yes, okay, so we take those. Then I come up with a sex-related story for each one of them. Then the nice. sexual story plus the flavor of the actual beer go together as its own thing. And then we That's take cool. each one of those and go down until we get to the best beer slash review. Yeah, no, I love it. It's good, good. Yeah, okay, I'm in. Sign me up. Okay. I'm going to take a picture of all the stouts that I have, cans, beer, everything, and send them to you. And I'm going to post them online and then have people, like, send in, like, their votes to, like, do like, a popular vote. I like it. I like it. I like it that you've turned it into a, um, a, a crowdsourced opinion thing. That's good. That's clever. Yeah, on Instagram, people want to participate. So I feel like there's a way to participate. I feel like I've never seen reviews like yours on Untapped because you get, like, 120 people liking your reviews. It's like, wow, a lot of people. Um, you know, people like third sets, especially men. Big fans, big fans. Um, can I can I talk about another beer? So, what what are your thoughts yeah. about this uh, about this stout you've just opened? It's it's pretty good. For, I am okay. I honestly think like imperial stouts are t typically. I'm again. I'm not trying to go like racial here. But just too too much, too much for me sometimes. They're just a lot. And I'm like, you know, sometimes <laughs> I don't need all of that. <laughs> Usually. But so you want it. Stout, you want it. You just don't need it. I just try it and I'm like, wow, I really overestimated my myself here. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's not even a humble brag, that's just a brag. So it's good. Yeah, that's not a first world problem. A that's an eight inch problem. Much. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh my. Sorry, sorry for under no, understating as well. Eight inches, please. You can do better. <laughs> you know, this is this is what I wish I was capable of. This is what I really need in life. <laughs> no. Don't be modest. You you know. You've, you've, you've definitely pushed yourself. You've got stretch goals, literally. Oh, I can take a big dick. I'm just saying. Like, okay. I'll, 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 yeah. Every day, this is not boyfriend material. This is like my uterus hurts for about four days. Okay. So there you go. Angry Chair Brewing, Untitled Art, the uterus hurting beer. The uterus hurting beer. So uh, the one we want to. It's great. Yeah. But only once. I personally would avoid it for its um, uterus hurting potential. Oh yeah, um, you know, it says it can cause birth defects, and I feel that. <laughs> um, no, good, dude, good grief. Um, I, I did want to talk about another one of them there, because <clears throat> I think it taps into a philosophy of yeah. yours. Yeah, we're going to talk about that one, but the um, 608 Brewing Cloudy IPA. It was, yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah, that one there from 608 and Untitled. Um, Pretty great. In, in your review, you've spoken about men like being hazy. I think you've got an opinion on men and haziness and why hazies are so popular. You said the cloudier your sperm, the more semen in it. Um, and I kind of agree with that because the more cloudy a girl's vaginal mucus, the more sperm in that, I find. <laughs> I would bet so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll compare and contrast later. Um, I mean, I'm interested in your theory on uh, haziness and and men and why they like hazies. Well, okay, as you know, I keep a rotation, and some of it's because I enjoy it, and some of it's because men are just shitty and hazy as fuck, and like they don't deserve my undivided attention because I don't have theirs. So. Yeah. Some of them I do, and they still look at my undivided attention, but some of them I don't. Like, for example, I was unfollowed, sent nine messages, told that I was fantastic, but we shouldn't talk anymore, and then messaged again an hour later being like, are you free for a phone call tonight? Oh, I'm sorry about that, that but hazy. talk about another guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was French fuck. That's okay. hazy as shit. 
It's pretty hazy. Men love to be hazy. They want women to be obsessed with them. They want them to be worrying about what they're doing. They want them to be thinking about them. And if they keep things hazy, the women have less clarity. And so in their heads, they're like, oh, she's thinking about me all the time. In reality, women, if a man is hazy with you, don't give him the time of day and he can either get some clarity or he can go away. Yeah. I feel like men like hazy beers because they like acting hazy. Women like hazy beers and hazy men. I, I am also guilty. I love this beer. I love hazy men. I don't know what's wrong with anybody, but we all like things to be a little bit Sinclair. Less clarity. No clarity. Sure. Um, yeah, so this is the toxic relationship of beers. All right. And still you kind of enjoyed it. Oh, I, you always enjoy a toxic relationship. The sex in a toxic relationship, life-changing. The memories are real high or real low, so they're like the most delible memories. This is a solid-ass beer. It's just toxic. Okay. It's good to know. It's good to know. Um, well, I think I want to drink it now. Um, but maybe it's because I'm a dude and Absolutely. I like craziness. Yeah. Yeah, you do, of course. And it's only 4.5. So, like, you know, it's oh. not like a super long-lasting toxic relationship. It's a nice little fling where, like, he treats you like shit, but the sex is good. And so you just go with it. Let's be honest. It says it's 4.5, but if it's in the hazy spirit, it's probably 15%. It's being hazy. Yeah. It, it sounds like that beer to light. I mean, hazy people do. Sure. Being hazy. All right, let's close this out. Let's yeah, talk about all together out. IPA, and then we're going to make a decision about which is your favorite of the untitled art beers, and then people are going to go buy that, I think. Okay, the peach sour is the favorite, but let's talk about this one all together now, which closes this out, and it's clearly not the favorite, so that's a lot of pressure on a beer for being mediocre, but yeah. Oh, I actually do really like this beer. Okay, yeah. This is boyfriend beer. This is boyfriend dick. This is a solid six inches with some good girth. This is like exactly what you want on a night out with your friends. This is a good sipping beer. This is not a breakfast beer. This is not a pre-lunch beer. This is not a sippable, enjoy it because you like it beer. This yeah. is solid go-to, what you think of when you want a nice beer. It's going to do the job and you're going to be happy. This is the long-term boyfriend of beers. Because um, you've changed your tune on that one, Melancholy, because you've said it's a <coughs> it's a boring beer, but made for a good cause. So it's a pity fuck of a beer. Do you think of boyfriends as pity fucks? Sometimes. The drunker I get, the less I like them, and the same thing with beer, too. So, like, oh, but when I'm yeah. sober, I can reasonably think of, like, how this is actually good for me. Nobody likes what's good for them when they're drunk. Right. No, I totally And maybe understand. if I had three of these, I would have had a better night with them. I also know when you've drunk that in the past, I've gotten a call saying, I think I just, uh, as you were saying earlier, made a guy pass out from a blowjob. So you called it the blowjob pass out challenge beer, um, which is interesting. Girls, get on this. I want you to down this beer and then I want you to try to make your boyfriends pass out with a blowjob. If you could actually do it, I will personally send you a beer. So when you say... Yeah pass out like he he can't just you know have an orgasm where his eyes roll back in his head he's got a faint i want knees to buckle i want someone to hit the ground oh wow standing blowjob pass out oh it's brutal look you ask you ask a lot of men i can tell you that i mean it's hard on the girl too one time I, my friend cassidy grew up trying to get her boyfriend to do it so you know it was not for the faint of heart but i believe in you okay well, that was a beautiful, I learned a lot from that. Um, I'm sad I only got like, what feels like the most boring beer of all of them to no, try myself. No, that was good, that was a good beer. Okay, yeah. So let's let's talk about- That's somebody's you, dream girl, if you know it. Oh, somebody's dream girl, yeah. We're, we're all somebody's dream partner. I think there's a raccoon in Indiana that really wants me. And I'm not talking about a real raccoon. That's just, you know, we've got cougars and there's raccoons. So, yeah. You know, we don't need to be falsely modest. There is a leggy model with red hair in LA that wants me. Let's just be real. That's true. You're on to me. You're on to me. Um, 
You think she's pretty too. There's a hazy French fucker that wants me for about three minutes a day and lets me know about it. And then the other 20 uh-huh. hours a day is like, oh my God. <laughs> We've both, we've both got admirers. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful to hear. All right. So the award for the best untitled art beer that anybody watching this has to go get. <laughs> oh, sorry. I got very excited. It's, it's, it's obviously. Roof. We're the still going to go to the peach hop. Oh, wow. There it is. Hold the can there up there. Is. Read what's on the side. Let's do it. All right, this is the Untitled Art Dry Hop Peach Sour. It's a kettle sour with peach puree. Brewed, canned by Untitled Art in Wanaku, Wisconsin. The art is by Stephanie Heyman. Mm. It's 16 fluid ounces or one pint for you people who don't use the American standard system. It is 6.5% alcohol. Mm. And the Surgeon General says that we should not drink it while we're pregnant and it impairs our ability to drive and may cause health problems, just like any other redhead with real tits, so. Marvelous, I'm glad it's there. It's Stephanie Heyman, one of the um, artists. She often uh, mixes Uh mediums and surfaces, and she focuses on uh, abstraction and intricate geometries. There you go. She's mother to two boys, Owen and Jacob, and wife to Matt. There you go. And that that is the perfect, the perfect, um, and, and what sort of guy is that? <clears throat> oh, this is a girl. She's oh, a, it's a girl. Right. She is a fake redhead with real double D's right. that will mm. make your life better, not ruin it. I, I adore your rampant bisexuality. It's great. You're welcome. <laughs> All righty. This was beautiful. Um, I've learned a lot. And uh, we're going to, you've clearly got a lot of beers in your fridge. I've got some beers here. So we will continue this again and uh, continue the, um, the ascent of the melancholy philosophy to all the women out there and all the guys that are curious about how to speak about beer in a different way, don't relate it to music, don't talk about all the stupid aromas and stuff like that, relate it to men, relate it to sex, relatability. There you go. Drink more beer, fuck more boys or girls, if that's what you're into. Or trans. Or, you know, fuck more beautiful human beings. I like it. Humans um, that don't brew coffee and talk about humans, like the La Lindura crowd. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Fuck more beautiful humans. Don't fuck coffee snobs. Yeah, don't don't fuck coffee snobs. All right. Melancholy Price, thank you so much. Um, And I look forward to more Untitled Art turning up in uh, Australia. Meanwhile... Me too. um, I'm sure you're going to continue to buy more and more of this stuff. So I'm sure we'll have more to review on Untitled Art in the future. We will. I love Untitled Art. I love what they're doing. I love getting some art with my beer. It's my two favorite things combined. All about it. And it's been really lovely talking to you. Oh, um, thank hopefully you. maybe next time we can, we can talk more about what you're doing, maybe some wine stuff. I don't know. We'll see. We could do that. We could do that. Um, all righty. Stay well. Any, any last messages to to your beloved fans? Hmm. Summer of Stouts coming to an Instagram near you. I love it. Cheerio. All right. See you. Have a good night. Did I, did I successfully?